there is still a lot of confusion around what exactly is the difference between a label and an annotation in Kubernetes. Let me try to explain it in as simple words as possible. For a quick difference, labels are used for identification and annotations are used for decoration. Both are key value pairs. The purpose of labels is to group the resources in Kubernetes together. For example, pods with same labels will be part of a same Kubernetes deployment. Annotation, on the other hand, will allow you to assign, for example, a resource to another resource. For instance, if you're running Kubernetes in AWS and in a service like AWS EKS, and if you want to assign a load balancer to a specific subnet in the VPC, then you will annotate that subnet or tag that subnet, in other words, with a special annotation through which AWS EKS will recognize to put that load balancer in that subnet. And that subnet is primarily used for ingress. So we can use labels for it, but then it will be hard to differentiate. So this is the top level difference between the label and the annotation. Let me delve a bit deeper into it. In Kubernetes, again, you can use labels to assign key value pairs to any resource. Labels are ubiquitous. Ubiquitous means they are found everywhere in every resource in Kubernetes. And they are very necessary for the everyday operations, such as creating services, deployments, etc. Some labels are vital. You cannot do without them. For example, the service selector, operators, etc. And then there are various other labels which are just used to tag resources so that we could make sense out of what exactly is running in our Kubernetes cluster. Kubernetes own official documentation also recommend you few labels like you should have a label such as name, instance, version, component, managed by, and then part of. Labeling resources properly help you make sense of what's deployed in your Kubernetes cluster. For example, you can use kubectl commands with the labels to pull out some information. And one of the, if you, for example, one of the common command which I routinely use in kubectl is to pull out the pods of a particular deployment with the help of develop, uh, labels. And you can use dash l flag or switch with the kubectl command. Now, if you have a multi tenant cluster, which means that if there are a lot of services in one Kubernetes cluster, or if you have multiple deployments running in a uh, in only in one namespace, then labels can be a lifesaver because on the basis of label, labels you can differentiate between different deployments and services, and you can do a lot of reporting and monitoring and alerting on the basis of that. So this is what labels are for. These are for grouping and for identification of your resources. And as I said, annotations are primarily for decoration. Whereas labels are used to select resources, annotations decorate resources with metadata. As a Kubernetes administrator, you can assign annotations to any workload. However, more often Kubernetes and Kubernetes operators decorate resources with extra annotations a good example is annotation like kubernetes.io slash ingress bandwidth to assign bandwidth to your pods. And there are a lot of others too, as I mentioned, the load balancer one. We have annotations like uh, region, instance type in AWS, and a lot of others. Annotations are also used extensively in operators. But some people think that it's not a good way of doing it because that way you don't stay vendor neutral. But if you're running in AWS or in GCP, for example, and you don't intend to move out, then it doesn't really matter. And you can always uh, document it well, and you can always automate it so that even if you have to move to a uh, another cloud vendor or maybe on, on the on-prem, you could easily change it. 
So I hope that you found it useful and the difference between a label and annotation is clear to you. If you have any feedback or question, please put it in the comment section. Thank you.